What's up everybody? On today's video, we're going to be talking about the truth about moving to San Francisco, California. Before we can even talk about San Francisco, let's get some statistics out of the way so we can understand the truth about San Francisco because there's a lot of misinformation out there. According to crime rates, San Francisco is 27 out of 100 cities. That means that about three quarters of the cities in the United States or large metropolitan areas have a higher crime rate. San Francisco has one of the highest life expectancies of any metropolitan area in the United States. It has the second highest life expectancy of any metropolitan area in the United States. Some of the areas people are being pushed into the United States, places like Jacksonville, Florida, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and San Antonio, Texas, have among the lowest life expectancies in the United States. The city limits of San Francisco lost 7% of its population. So did 8 out of 10 of the largest metropolitan areas in the country. That means it's a national trend for large cities right now to be losing population. Smaller metropolitan areas in places like Idaho and Utah are growing. Bend, Oregon grew 4%. The Villages, Florida grew 5%. Punta Gorda, Florida grew 5%. People left large cities and moved to smaller metropolitan areas. People are leaving California. Absolutely not true. The San Bernardino metropolitan area in Riverside actually grew by over 1% during this entire time period. That people left large cities to move to smaller places that were more affordable because they could work from home during the pandemic. However, the media outlets have twisted this entire situation around to fulfill their political narrative and make the rest of us think that these people are failing. And in fact, the only thing holding together the statistics for some of these cities' growth is in fact people from large cities coming with big city money to buy in their smaller metropolitan areas. Without the influx of people from big cities moving to some of these towns, they would likely now be in a recession economically with real estate values dropping. So what is really bad about San Francisco? It's the homeless people with the natives everywhere. You're going to find that everywhere. We were just in Pasco County, Florida, which is a rural suburban county, mostly retired people. And we found needles there everywhere. We couldn't find it in San Francisco, even though we looked for it. We walked around the Tenderloin, we walked around Chinatown. We purposely went to Oakland, all of the worst areas we were told about in San Francisco. And it looks to be about average for any metropolitan area its size. The real downsides of living in San Francisco is the enormous cost to live there. The reason it's expensive is because good things cost a lot of money. Places that are affordable, there's usually a reason why they're affordable. San Francisco is one of the greatest cities, not only in the United States, but actually in the entire world. And the statistics in crime, life expectancy, income, and many other categories like low crime would actually testify that it is in fact one of the greatest cities, not just in the United States, but in the entire world. Even hardcore locals will tell you though that the schools are very bad and that there just aren't really good possibilities for families here. So if you have children, it really isn't the best place to put your family. And this is not coming from a perspective of an outsider. This is what people that live in San Francisco that love their city will tell you that if you have children and families, it's not a place you want to put them. The schools are bad, so if you have a family, this is not a suitable place. And also many people, once they get a family, move out of San Francisco because they know it's not suitable for families. When it comes to addiction, despite what you have heard, large cities that are expensive do not lend themselves very well to this type of lifestyle because you have to be a very busy, hardworking, and focused person to live in one of the most expensive cities in the country. The vocabulary and the ideology of people in San Francisco is peculiar. Somebody called me a Latin ex. I, I was like, I, I'm not an ex. I'm still married to my wife. Disrespect my marriage one more again, I dare you. It's no secret that San Francisco uh, 
is like that. We, uh, we're aware of that, so we can move on past that. Of course, you know, I can't really make this video without mentioning that. One of the largest and most prospitable, is that prospitable? Is that even a word? Well, my doctor wanted to test my prospitable. I was like, no, sir, we're not that old yet. There's a lot of Asians here, and they're doing very well for themselves. So if you come from a different background, one background that's not exactly the most popular here in the United States, you might want to consider a place like San Francisco that's definitely more welcoming to diversity. And uh, not Arkansas, that's definitely not more uh, welcoming there. And by the way, when we say Asians, we're not just talking about the Chinese-looking ones. There's also a bunch of other countries that are considered Asians. You might want to look into that before you study analytics and stuff and figure that part out. When we say Asians, we're also including Pakistanians, Indistanians, and all types of other people that are also within Asia. Thus the term Asian. So if you don't like a good old Southern hospitality, you can move on to San Francisco. They might not have a little bit of charm like we do. But I guess there'll be more people like you there for some reason. It's not like we would treat you wrong down here or nothing like that. Look at Hawk Mad down there. He runs that gas station right outside of Millbrook, Alabama. I don't know, honey. He's not here no more. His tractor ran him over and then it blew up on him. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sure his business will be taken over by his family down there. He had a wife and kids. I don't know, honey. She had a horrible hunting accident. I didn't know she liked hunting like that. I wish I'd have known, man. I would have gone hunting with her. I know, I would have too. Who would have known she liked hunting? Who knew? She seemed pretty afraid of what it might carry open carry down there. Done oh, just yeah. freaked her to crap out. Who'd have known she liked weapons like that? She did. Well, apparently she didn't know how to use them, right? Apparently. Apparently not, man. Well, rest in peace, Doc. Made a family down there. Oh, yes. We'll bless their hearts, man. Well, bless their top down there. Well, about 21% of the San Francisco population is Chinese, 4.5% are Filipino, 1.6% are Vietnamese, 1.3% are Japanese, 1.2% are Asian Indians, 1.2% are Koreans, 0.3% are Thais, 0.2% are Burmese, 0.2% of Cambodian. Indonesians, Laotians, and Mongolians make up less than 0.1% of the population. Let me tell you, I like mangoes. The other day I had a mango cream pie down there. When I was about a little kid, I used to have me one of them mongoose bicycles down there with the chrome pegs, so I ain't got no problem with manganese people. I ain't got no problem with manganese people, man. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have had all types of magnesium after that one colonoscopy surgery went wrong. Mayonnaise only 40% mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, that's, that's like white paper down there. Used to be 92% back in 1940, good old times. Well, nowadays, it's a diverse place of high rents, high incomes, and a lot of people think about moving to a small town in Arkansas where we'll be very, we're expecting them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we're expecting you out here. We're, uh, we're going to give you a warm welcome and just like uh, that tractor down there. Well, there's people from all parts of Mexico, too. Uh, there's Mexican Mexicans, there's Salvadoran Mexicans, there's Nicaraguan Mexicans, there's Guatemalan Mexicans, and there's Puerto Rican Mexicans. There's all types of people from all parts of Mexico in San Francisco. A Cuban fella come to the workplace the other day, wanted to buy a truck. I said, look, man, I don't care what part of Mexico you're from, I like tacos, okay? No other city in the United States was hit as hard by the pandemic as San Francisco with a dependency on tech jobs it's no surprise that when 2020 came around and COVID became a thing, a lot of people in San Francisco had to pick up and go somewhere else. After all, why would you be in the most expensive city in the United States if the job that you needed to pay for that housing to be there was no longer relevant? So if you have a F-350 on the driveway and you got two kids, I can understand that moving to a place like San Francisco would make absolutely no sense for you. But does it mean it's a crime-ridden, dangerous place full of homeless people that are going to jump on you? And No, it's not like that. It's just like any other large city. 
It's expensive, but it's also one of the most beautiful cities in the United States. So much emphasis these days is put on how horrible San Francisco is. For one, the analytical information doesn't really back that up. I travel across the United States in good and bad places, and my personal experiences also don't back that up. I was at a car dealership recently, and they had an F450 landscaping truck. I don't need a landscaping truck. I have no use for it. Does that mean landscaping trucks are evil? No, there's somebody out there who needs a landscaping truck. It just isn't me. In the case of San Francisco, what this city offers may not be what you personally need, but does that mean it's an evil, horrible place? Probably not. It may not be what you're looking for. It may not be what you need, but that doesn't inherently make it a horrible place. Would I personally move to San Francisco? If the right circumstances allowed it, I do not have any kids and I do like big cities and I think there's a world of incredible things to discover living in a place like San Francisco. So if the income was right, I would not be opposed to living in San Francisco. What I would probably dislike about living in San Francisco is hearing people use terms like Latin X or some of the other things along those lines that I'm not really going to elaborate on, but you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. A lot of people here have a particular ideology, and I don't like ideologies in general. May it be that southern man who's just a little bit what too much in one direction, or somebody calling me a Latinx. I just don't like it when people take things to the extreme. I like kind of people that are normal right in the middle when somebody takes forcing their ideology down your throat like people in the deep south or a lot of people in inner cities i really don't like that and i think the hardest part of living in san francisco for somebody like me would just be listening to people call me a latin x and, and you know what angers me is they're not latinos that are doing this like i'm a latino and i would never refer to myself as that even uh Arkansas, which is the most uh, Arkansas place you can think of. Even their governor said they're not going to use this vocabulary. Uh, interesting, I'm sure they use other vocabulary in Arkansas that's not friendly either, but that's a whole another chapter of hypocrisy going on in the world right now. I'll let you know if I'm ready to be called Latinx or Redneckx or whatever the crap you call me. I'll call myself whatever I want to. You're not going to put a title on me. Hey, the label I got on now is working fine. Please don't rebrand me into something else. Also, I feel like customer service is a horse's colon when it comes to, or is it colon when it comes to, uh, to living in California. People here are just downright rude. I quite possibly just about got two people fired when I was in California. One was at a hotel and another one was also at a hotel. It just seems like hospitality here has a different understanding and some of the young people in California don't understand the type of respect they have to give other people. And that would also most certainly be a problem for me because I just do not tolerate disrespect. And the people here are very rude and disrespectful. And it's not everybody. You'll meet some really genuine, awesome people. I think one of the biggest misunderstandings about California is that everybody is rude and snobby. It's definitely not the case. I met some incredible people in California. I met people in California that were probably too friendly. You guys are like amazing. You like need a hug and like love. So yes, there were people that were very friendly and overly loving in California. I checked my pockets to make sure they weren't pickpocketing me and they weren't. They were just genuinely friendly people that wanted to hug a complete stranger while looking at elephant seals. So not everybody in California is a 12-pack bag of link sausages. I mean, there's great people out there who hug strangers while looking at whales. There are a lot of Prius driving people in California, but that's another topic. At the end of the day, San Francisco may be for you if you are a minority wanting to be in a very hard-working, expensive place. And if you think San Francisco is dangerous and bad... Come on down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or Birmingham, Alabama. I'll show you good old Southern town. If you are a young person looking to get a good education and just make a crap load of money and experience incredible city things, I think San Francisco will give you an incredible life experience. But if you have family, kids, and are just able to look for affordability, of course a city this big and expensive is not the right place for you. 
the future is still going to be computers and desk jobs, not so much tractors and fields. Both things are needed for the world to function today. So we need people in places like San Francisco to be happy. And the notion that's going around that these are horrible places and horrible people, it's just completely bogus. It's a city, it's expensive, and that's the way cities tend to be. If you're a young person moving to the United States from another country, you would probably be better off falling into a large city where you can maximize your potential. San Francisco is one of the largest tourist destinations within the United States, and it's really a shame that most people that visit San Francisco are going to go there with fear and just all these wrong concepts of how dangerous the city really is. It's really not like that. And it, Consider the size of the San Francisco area. You have about 5 million people. That's about the population of the state of Alabama. So if you were to grab every news article that came out of every place in Alabama and say this is the city of Alabama. Let's say Alabama wasn't one state. It was just one city. Let's pretend for a minute that the state of Alabama was a desert. And in the middle of this desert was one city called Alabama. And all of the crime that came out of the entire state of Alabama was centered around the city of Alabama, it would be about two to three times more crap coming out of that city than coming out of San Francisco. So you have five million people living in this tiny geographical area. So of course, horrendous things are gonna happen. If you look at it from that perspective, all of the news articles that came out of the state of Alabama, if they were all based around a city of similar proportion, you would probably be terrified of this place. So the same thing happens with this metropolitan area. You've got 5 million people living in this area. So of course, every single day, horrendous things are gonna happen. I was just going to illustrate to you guys the day that I edited this video, exactly how many horrendous things happened in Alabama in just one day. But some of these news stories were so graphic that I couldn't even mention it on YouTube without flagging my video. Let's just give you an idea that yeah, if you have 5 million people in one place, of course there's gonna be all types of horrendous things taking place. Just look at the news for Alabama. Alabama is a state that has the same population as this metropolitan area, and every day horrendous things happen throughout the entire state. But what you don't really think about is when you look at a city where news stories like Chicago, for example, horrendous news stories come out of Chicago every day. It's not like the whole entire Chicago has this problem. You got millions of people living in these places. Of course, bad things are going to happen every single day. If my YouTube channel continues to grow, I would have absolutely no problem moving to a place like San Francisco. Would there be things I would love? Absolutely. Would there be things I would hate? No doubt. I chose to live in the Sarasota area of Florida now. My rents are expensive, but I absolutely love it. I got beaches, warm weather, incredible vibes. There's some horrendous things about living in Florida. However, like the fact that the vast majority of people here are either working 80 hours a week to survive if they're young, and then if the ones that are available are like retired and you have no compatibility with these people. So it's definitely difficult living in Florida from a social aspect. And a lot of people said that San Francisco is the same way. They just weren't able to make relationships there. And that can vary from place to place. There's some places that lend themselves much better to social aspects of life than others. In the case of San Francisco, it seems like making friends here would be just as difficult as making friends here in Florida where I live. Of course, it is for two completely different reasons. In a vast majority of Florida, people are just too old to be any fun anymore. A vast majority of big cities, people are too busy to have friendships. And in small towns, while people are able to have friendships, they can be very hostile to outsiders. And I've had people tell me that move to smaller areas that they really struggle to make friendships. So it seems like everywhere you go, there's positives and there's negatives. But when it comes to the city of San Francisco, if it is a fitting match for you and you're really to really ready to take on one of the most incredible cities in the world. I would not let this bad negative thing that's going around about San Francisco get to you. A lot of YouTubers that live in San Francisco are saying, hey, we live here and these things are exaggerated and untrue and they actually enjoy living there. And what's nice about San Francisco is that you're getting a very good consensus from all the YouTubers that live there are saying just about the same things. It's YouTubers that live in other places 
that are giving this place a bad narrative. And even the YouTubers that are leaving San Francisco are being very honest and upfront about the reasons why they're living. And it seems to be more of a compatibility issue with what type of city it is and what the specific needs of those bloggers are, which are completely different. All right, guys, there it is. That is my video on should you move to San Francisco. If you are a young professional person that wants to make a crap load of money, yes, you will love the experience. However, if you're looking to get married, have kids, and settle down on a farm in Arkansas with good old southern friends and people like that, yunk too. I do want to add that we have been living in an apartment for the first time as adults, and I have really enjoyed the experience. I think there's about 300 units in the buildings that I live, and I have had less problems with 300 people here in this building than I had with like seven neighbors in Alabama. So just because you give people who are unorthodox, is that, is that the right term again? Hey Siri, define unorthodox. Right, now I forgot what I was trying to say. I had more trouble with seven unorthodox Alabamian neighbors than I've had from 300 hardworking people here in Sarasota. So the notion that being around other people is going to mean more trouble, yeah, if you're a complete knucklehead who can't get along with anybody, but if you're a civilized person, you can deal with thousands of people around you and everybody get along just fine. I mean, can you imagine grabbing 300 people from Alabama and putting them all in close quarters and see what happens? I wouldn't want to be there to see that. Hey Siri, show me a video of 300 people from Alabama in one place. I'll need to access your YouTube data to do this. How the crap is this guy uploading videos straight from prison? Alright, so I got a video of a guy called a Honeycomb Brazy who's in prison. And apparently he's got all his buddies in prison together having a good time. How they're able to get this video in a prison is, is mind-boggling.